Where is everybody? Hello, Paolo. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And you're welcome to another session from the Think Tank. And we've just been breaking our heart laughing here in the 10 minutes prior. So please, 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 please forgive us that. But I'm absolutely honored to be joined by our chair, Kevin Jordan. Good to see you, Kevin. Carol Nichols, welcome, Carol. Magnetic mindset, right? I'm looking forward to it. And of course, the wonderful Kay Estridge. Hello, Kay. Hello. Go straight over to Kevin. And hey, apparently, Kevin. Kevin has asked me to join you tonight as well. So I'm going to stick around and say hello. Yeah, yeah. we just uh, pulled Ronan in as well. So he's going to give us a segment. Thanks for hanging out again. Uh, today, we're going to do more of a deep dive and get into these three guys, get some ideas of how they're coping with life right now in different ways and and we had a bit of a discussion whether we are um staying sane or embracing our insanity or what that really means so it's going to be kind of fun we're going to start with carol and she's going to tell us a bit about what she's up to with this magnetic mind stuff you know what i was frozen out for a while <laughs> i was like where'd everybody go <laughs> is, is it cold up there Oh, it's really cold. It's yeah. snowing outside today. All right. Well, then that's the reason. <laughs> I guess. I'm thinking, I think I have to leave the meeting and go back in. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, <laughs> you introduced me. I would have made, because I heard Carol. <laughs> oh, so. okay. Oh, yes. Carol, welcome back. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, uh. Hi, everybody. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Okay, okay, so Carol's going to tell us about her, uh, her magnetic mindset uh, stuff. Yeah. So get to it. Right, thank you. So back in, back in November, I was at my sister's house babysit babysitting her dogs. And uh, I have been a self-proclaimed self-help junkie, right? Recovered now <laughs> for like the last... <laughs> six months or whatever, whatever November is. But I've always, 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 you know, it's like self-help. Okay, let's get this book. Let's, I was always thinking I was needed fixing somehow in order to create. I mean, walking around with the affirmations on the, you know, on the mirror of home, doing all kinds of meditation, you know, nothing ever really worked, but there was always something. And then I, clicked on one of the little info commercials that Chris Duncan had on and I was like freaking hooked. It's, he went through all the same stuff, a lot of things that I've already done. And he started talking about, you don't need to be fixed. You're perfectly fine the way you are. You know, when you look at all these other people that have, that are extremely successful and he named off, you know, all everybody, they all have problems. They all have whatever but they got to their goal. They got to wherever that they wanted to be because they knew how to manifest the stuff in their life, right? So anyway, I, I ended up learning a lot more and I thought, oh my God, this is like me because it went through the law of attraction. And when he talked about the law of attraction, so I was a firm believer, did the secret, did whatever, but how come, you know, I would look at my life and I would see, all of these incredible top speakers, you know, you people in front of me, my husband, um, and I'm thinking, what is it in them that they can do what they do so good? They can create these businesses. They can do whatever that they want. And, uh, and then one time, well, we were in, where were, we, where were we, Italy? And I was watching Sarah Petty when she was with her kids and her son had this um, new business that he was doing on the photo thing that he was um, <clears throat> working on, right? I saw her interact with, with him and about, just put it out there. How much money do you want to make? You know, you, what, do you, what do you want to charge? It's okay. Whatever it is, just put it out there. That was so different than how I was growing up. My, you know, aspect of growing up was, you can't do that. You, you're stupid. You can't. My sister would always drill it in my head how stupid I was or how ugly I was or whatever, whatever, you know. So we have these subconscious things in us that are preventing us from creating the life that they want. And so when Chris talked about 
cutting through, getting through to that subconscious. And um, when you finally are able to look at those things that are preventing you, um, you can reach your goals. You can do whatever. So they have this process, what they call a recode, plus all kinds of other teachings that they do in meditations or whatever. And it just cemented home to me that this guy is really onto something. This is the first time I've ever seen this because I've been into Reiki. I've done all kinds of energy work. Um, I'm a Reiki master and in other forms of you know energy work with people. But there was still that underlining what is the going on with me internally? How come I can never do what I really want to do? And then when I went to the first recode with Chris, it was on public speaking. And when I got out of it was, I had these memories that flashed up about, you know, being little and being humiliated and, and whatever. And so when you're five years old, you don't really have a sense, you have no clue, you know, what's going on, but you have these wounds and hurts and that you, you, they get stuck inside you. And so then when you're adult, um, and there, those feelings are there for protection. When you're five years old, you don't want to be humiliated. You don't want to be, um, you know, hurt or whatever. And so every time I was ever asked to speak or, or whatever, I thought, no, 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 I can't. Because those feelings kept surfacing up. And I thought, when I went through that first recode and they were, it was like totally gone. I can remember uh, Carol Andrews coming over and I went, I think I could do this. I think I could stand up here and talk about this whole thing and really become what I really want to do. And back when I was in high school, I always wanted to be a counselor. I always wanted to, you know, to be whatever, but I never did. I never had the confidence, the never thought I had the capability. Sister, you're stupid. You can't do anything, whatever. So going through these resistance, these blocks, um, I can finally see where I am going. I am achieving what I want. So this particular program um, teaches you a real structure. You know, talk about goals. <laughs> And um, they first teach you goal setting. I mean, I have never set a whole goal that I could follow through in my whole life. But this particular process that they teach you is they call it lenses. And it is coming from your future self. So you have your current reality and then you have your desired reality. And then you've got this tension, you know, of where you want to be and where you are right now. So where is where are the tension structures that are keeping you from getting your current, you know, your desired reality? So when you do this process of unpacking um, and going through that resistance, emotional resistance, memory, you know, memory blocks or whatever, then it's like all of that law of attraction finally starts to set in. And you can see this unfolding and unhappy, you know, right in front of me that I've been able to see since November. It's been a pretty wild ride, pretty exciting. So the lenses is, is a big part of it because it, you, you put yourself out there like, you know, you are pretending, right? Who do you really want to be? You really focus in on your goal. <clears throat> and then you can break it down into what you plan on doing. Where do you see yourself in a year? Where do you see yourself in nine months? you know, uh, three months and then one month. And then you break that down into daily stuff. So what's my goal for the next week? What, what you could be doing and what you're going to do. So what you could be doing just opens up your mind to possibilities of what's out there. And so then, oh, it's a whole process that I'm really looking for a focus group so I can show this um, and take everybody through the whole 12 week program for free. And uh, so email me because <laughs> I'm going to be looking for people to take you through this because it's really pretty cool. Then you find out your true, your true goals, you know, who are you, uh, your true value system of what makes you up. So you take it from the advantage point of where you are right now. So if somebody was looking at you and saying, what would that person value? You know, what have they value to be the person that they are right now? Then you take it to the point of where you really want to be. So if it is somebody 
that is a big speaker or you know that has created a million dollars or abundance or whatever what what have they valued in their life to become that person so when you look at that and when you write all those values down my values were completely different because my value here for my desired reality was <laughs> so different it was like oh gee yeah i have to do my follow through and i have to do this i have to do that so <clears throat> it's a big eye opener on where you want to be and then the whole structure process of you know recoding recoding um uh figuring out where you want to be and where you are now and just cut through it and so you you are there and with the meditations you know that we do daily um keeping your focus keeping in that higher vibration so this world that we are living in right now we are living in such a crazy time with lower frequencies this is bringing yourself up to a higher frequency a level so you don't get caught up into the crazy stuff you know the hate the anger whatever all of those lower vibrations and if you don't understand what vibration is there's a, <clears throat> a japanese guy that actually has photos of what water looks like you know like frozen water when you really think about hate and when you're looking at it and what it looks like versus love and gratitude and all of that so <laughs> anyways that's what i have been doing and setting myself to on a future path. So instead of worrying about this virus, I'm looking for the future. I'm not looking at Trump. And I had an issue with, I had this major issue with Trump, with, especially where my daughter, my daughter's North Carolina. So that Senator in North Carolina, you know, he, oh, he set me off. So when I went to one of my meetings, I said, Oh my God. And it was the perfect thing because Chris says, okay, who's, who's pushing your hot buttons? You know, let's, let's, you know, work on that. And I went Trump and this freaking Senator, right? <laughs> so, so what you do is you take out that emotion. You can still have the knowledge of it, but that nasty emotion is gone. So I can actually, live my day my normal day to day without that nagging horrible anger you know my daughter's putting herself on the line every single day going to hospitals you know working with sick people and uh, you know when you see the government and what they're doing just was really wrecking me and pulling me down but nope i'm at that higher frequency now <laughs> thank goodness so that's really what i've been doing it's been fun oh, <laughs> <laughs> Good. Wow. Yeah, I'm absorbing it. And that's awesome. And I'm so excited. And I'm excited to see you excited. And I love, uh, we're all feeling your energy right now. And I'm sure that <laughs> people are writing notes and trying to figure out. One thing I like about this, whether um, whichever program you're looking at, with the, the basis being Law of Attraction 101, and then the, all the different variations from there. Um, one thing that's cool about what you're saying is it's, it seems that there's a step-by-step -step process of something to do um, to work yes. through and that's really really great oh it is it's a wonderful step-by-step -step process to bring people through it and in the support that comes along with it i mean because every day um you you're reporting <laughs> to you know you do your lenses every week and so then when you are accountable to somebody it's a non-fail system. So, and then when you write down your gratitude every day, what are you grateful for? Um, where do you need help? Where do you need support? And then that allows the universe, that allows everything to, you know, open up and just unfold. I mean, things just, it happens. I'm at the right YouTube video or I'm, I come to the right person and it's just been, a, it's a pretty big, boost you know for me in my life <laughs> i told this kid i said i have been waiting for you to get born grow up and learn all this stuff <laughs> so you can teach it to me so i can go out and teach it to the world <laughs> because i've been looking for you for a long time <laughs> so he's oh, fun what was, the, what was the name of the um the i think it was a gentleman i don't know if you mentioned the name about the visual uh levels of vibration what do you know the name of the book oh um yeah i can get it for you i can't it's the, it's that jap the japanese guy with the frequencies that book yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You can even Google that. Um, oh, okay. Japanese scientist and okay. frequencies. Yeah, there's a lot of things out there right now on frequencies. Okay, so, thanks. Yeah, it's, it is pretty amazing. Taking notes. Yeah. Very, taking yeah there, there's also a, a study that goes along with the law of attraction, the law of vibration, and um, Bob Proctor talks about that quite a bit. So. Well, that's right. awesome. I, I love that you're, you're using this time and it looks like you were, you were doing this well before this came along, but, <laughs> yeah. but instead of, like you said, getting drawn into the, the negative aspects of this, you're putting your power toward what you can control and, and working on yourself. I, I'm finding that everywhere people tend, the self-awareness thing is, is spreading uh, also, yeah, you know, is. and, and we're, all, we're all kind of, <laughs> awakening to to ourselves and what we can do for others and it, it's a really there's really good things coming out of this as well so let's do just uh time wise let's go to k and see what uh what you're up to oh my goodness well thank you first of all for um asking me to be a part of this um i have found that this um this period of time has also been a journey for me, a lot of um, introspective soul searching because we have the time. And I think it was the very first, as Ronan would call it, tank tank, think tank, <laughs> think tank, think tank, where it was brought about uh, the gift of time. And that hit really, really strong with me because we have been given this, this gift of time. And as a creative, I found that in the beginning when we were locked in, shut in, uh, not only de dealing with the fear of, of the situation for all of humankind, but also of not being able to see my family, my parents. Um, once I kind of started to manage the fear part of it, I immediately went into what, what I am learning about myself um, versus uh, you know, that fight or flight type of immediate nature. I've decided that my two coping mechanisms are humor and acts of doing, like to be active, to stay active. And so with acts of doing, that goes with, um, or with humor, that kind of goes along with the fact that I now have pink hair um, because I don't <laughs> care. I call it quarantine hair. I don't care. Um, because it made, it made me smile and it made me happy. And I've even posted images of myself with scary morning hair because I think we all have to laugh a little bit right now. Um, it, there's time for seriousness, but there's also time to be happy and, and smiling. And so um, the, we, we've been creating funny videos on Facebook. If you want to follow along there, um, I post a lot of pictures of getting a chance to going over and seeing my parents um, yesterday at the assisted living. I finally get them 10 minutes away from me. They've been two hours away. And then this situation happened and they're in lockdown. So I could only touch my dad's hand through glass. And that was, that was really rough. But um, it's those little things that, that emotionally I'm, I'm trying to manifest into ways that I can help others. And through the sense of humor, through the videos, through the whatever it is that we do, um, one of the things that for the neighborhood, we have uh, rocks in our front yard. So we created um, happiness rocks. And we spray painted them, or painted them. We used anything that we had here at the house because I didn't, at the time, didn't want to leave the house. We didn't have masks um, and it was a very unsure time. So our first thing that we did was we created positivity rocks. And then when we go for walks, walks with our, <laughs> we go for walks with our rocks. We put them um, out along the neighborhood um, in different places out by the mailboxes or any place for kids that are out walking with their parents to be able to see and find. It's kind of like an Easter egg hunt. And then if you also on the Facebook page, we put, immediately put signs up. Here's one of them that fell out, fell down this morning. One side said help others. The other side said stay safe. One was a picture of an air hug. Um, so our neighbors, and still, it's it's been I think two weeks now. How long have we, how long have we been in this situation? Anybody know? Two weeks, three weeks, a month, a month. This concept of time has left us. Okay, we we're not uh, we're not into the the timekeeping anymore. It's been a month. That's back in the old ways of doing if things. If not longer, okay, yeah, we we've been five or six weeks, I think. Oh yeah. my. Oh my gosh, I'm saner than I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> All righty. Well, then that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> um, but it is, it's a strange story. <laughs> This is, I'm putting insanity back into this, this, this sense of calm and peace comes my insanity. Um, but with the, when we'll go outside and we'll do whatever in the front yard, uh, neighbors for the first time, I'm waving at neighbors I never knew. I'm saying hello to people that will be on their bikes coming by and they'll be like, cool signs. And I'll say, take a rock. And, and it's, it's, that I think is one of the positive things that has come from this is that we are hunkering down. We're doing things with family that we've never done before. We're doing soul searching. Um, I never realized that that was my go-to mechanism was humor and, and action and activity. Um, but I find that that to be true. So not only did we do the happiness rocks and the positivity signs, but um, I make positivity bracelets that are available. And then we started making, um, masks but our masks were a little bit different than everybody else's um we uh, and it's kind of a funny story let me put it on and this isn't an infomercial it's just to show you how you can get creative so these guys fits like this and you take it off and you just wear it around your neck so it's with you all the time well, while everybody else was looking and finding, um, looking for, um, um, what's the stretchy stuff? Fill in the blanks. What's the stretchy stuff? Stretchy Spend stuff. It. Elastic? Elastic. Yeah, thank you. Winner! Um, <laughs> all the elastic was, so, was, so, was sold out. So we came up with using parachute cord from Home Depot. The inner liner of the masks um are is probably pop i can't pronounce that right probably pop polypropylene polypropyl that that's in the middle and we found that at home depot and then the front is just material that we were able to snag before it all got sold out well the back of it the third level of protection we found um black flat sheets at a store and bought them out so these masks have been made with items that would not be taken away from first responders or the nurses and the doctors on the front lines. So even though they are personal protection and they're safe for you to use out in public, these supplies have not been utilized or usurped and not taken away from the people that need them that have the, 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 90, the mask, the 95 mask that uh, the medical world and, and medical group needs. So we kind of thought out of the box and um, a portion of the proceeds we had set aside to go to, to uh, two local charities. And we found that a lot of people from out of state have their own charities. So we made some adjustments there, but we do, you know, it was my way of doing something. And as a creative, I think that was what a lot of us maybe bouncing around it and getting frustrated by is our creative, as photographers, our creative outlet is our camera. And, and unless you're going out, and I urge you to go out and give yourself self-assignments around your home or in your backyard or get involved with like some of the other uh, mentors and some of the other uh, photographers that are talking about providing opportunities like Janine with um, photo contests for, to stay in front of people. This is my way of staying in front of my, my clients. So once all of this is done, I want them to see that um, I'm trying to keep on the positive side of all of this and staying busy and staying creative. Um, and, and with the mask, yes, it is a little bit of an, an economic opportunity for me, but it's certainly never gonna, never gonna replace being a professional photographer, but it keeps me busy. And um, I think idle, what is it my mom used to say? Idle, idle time makes idle minds. Wait, am I making? Something about hands, idle, idle hands creates. No. Anyway, um, staying busy, I think, is really important. And Carolyn and I talked briefly yesterday about I journal in the morning, but I never thought about journaling at the end of the day, too, just to tie it all together. So that's something that um, by, by staying creative and by staying focused and by staying positive and by helping others, like this right now is just as important to me as it is to, I hope, the people that are watching this, because we are all in this together. And there is not, if you think about it, there is not one industry. Could you see six plumbers doing this? <laughs> you know, I can't. I, but we are photographers, and, and not only through the tank tank, 
but the the think tank and a lot of the other different groups that are doing things like this, we have created a network of photographers from around the world that are coming together to help each other out, even if it's to laugh with each other or cry with each other or uh, share silly stories or make masks and paint rocks, whatever it is that we each do, I urge you to do something. And, and I did have, I know some of you may freak out about this, but I had a dip day. I call it a dip day the other day where I really dipped. I mean, it was, I woke up sad. I really was in a funk all day long and I couldn't really put my finger on it. And I still mumbled through the day and I, you know, I kind of did some work in the office and I walked outside and I just couldn't get myself out of a funk. And it wasn't until the next morning that I woke up and I just chose not to be in a funk. There was no magic pixie dust or glitter that I sprinkled, sprunk, sprinkled? Sprinkled. Sprinkled. <laughs> sprinkled. Sprinkled over my head and made everything all better because you guys, this sucks. This is a really bad bad, bad time in our, in humanity's existence. Um, but we got to suck it up. We got to pull it up. We got to pull it out. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I hope Howard's not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good we gotta thing Ron's not listening. <laughs> we got to get together, you guys, and we got to stay Focus on what's important, which is our families and our neighbors and um, our clients, because when we do get through this, they're going to need us to be um, in a good place. And so whether you are traveling down a journaling or whether you're exercising or eating right or whatever it is that brings you peace and joy, just keep doing it. And I'm going to keep painting rocks and making masks and putting up signs and waving at neighbors and dressing up my dogs funny and sharing it with you because that's that's what we're going to do for each other we're going to help each other now and we're going to get through this because we're doing it we're better together and that's we right definitely are um so i love you guys i do miss y'all and do you have any idea how hard this time is when you're a hugger i'm a professional hugger and i can't i can't i mean it's like this just isn't working <laughs> Close your eyes and do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. I had another note I wanted to, to, you know, kind of share. And this is all, by the way, this is all off the cuff. We really didn't have a plan for this. This was just, you know, getting people together from different perspectives to share a little bit of what we're going through and that we're human and we're, 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 we're doing just what you guys are doing also. We're just um, willing to to do it in front of you. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> I'm really scared that Howard's going to turn up now. I really am. <laughs> I knew before we started, Raymond, I, I knew. <laughs> but Karen was the first one to swear. <laughs> Let's talk to Ronan for a while. <laughs> Uh, very if you, cool. If you do want to buy masks, we have them available. <laughs> I do. I want to send one to my daughter. <laughs> we have all kinds of great, um, we even have tiger ones, like for Carol Baskin. <laughs> for what? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, the Tiger King, that whole thing. Oh, Ross been wanting to watch that. Really? We have, we have tiger masks. Oh, sorry. Anyway, go ahead. I feel like I'm sitting at home with friends. <laughs> uh, you are. You know, that's a, that's the cool part. We've been talking about this with other people. It's like, sure, we're in other places, but we're just across the screen from one another. And this this is a new, the the new level of connection is incredible. I've I've spent more time with my friends than ever before. Um, <laughs> you know, at, at least like this. Yeah. I miss yeah. the connection. I, I miss the the hugs where. I, we're all huggers. Artists are touchy feely people, you know. That's why when we get together at our conventions, we could call it hug fest. <laughs> yeah. We do. We we miss we miss that. And you know, I've got a very small circle of uh, people here in the town that I'm in, and they're all like me that they're they're isolating by themselves during this. And so uh, you know, we're we're finding ourselves that when we get together at night, getting quite creative. And the neat part of that is. 
you know, we're, we're doing things we've never done before. Last night, we put a projector up on the, on the uh, rooftop of the Irish pub and, and we watched a movie up there and grilled out. And so, you know, different things, uh, just, just coming up with different ways. And the cool part is what I hear from every person is just such gratitude, you know, yeah. like, uh, and I don't know, there's just so much love coming out right now. It's, it's super mm -hmm. cool. And I love too what you said about um, doing and continuing to do. I think sitting still is, is the worst thing to do. Waiting around for something, that's always a bad idea. And even if, if you do a lot of planning between now and then, you can also do a lot of doing between now and then as well. And you will already be up to a nice jog by the time this comes back around instead of having to, to start back up. Yeah. So let's go over to Vernon, who's going to use his Irish accent to talk. Right, think tank. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. Um, thanks, Kevin, for having me. Um, yeah. So what did I want to say? I, I basically just want to say that um, none of us were ready for this, right? It just hit us from from beyond. Um, I, I'm like my role in our business. We're a small business, thirty people. But my role as the CEO is strategic, and then I have a marketing function, and then I have a commercial function. So I regard myself as a strategic marketing commercial person. And um, when I hit, I went, I went, right, what does this mean? So I said, right, first protect your family. So our eldest son is a type one diabetic. So he's in that space. So very early we cocooned him at home because um, he's still living here with us. And we protected him because he works in the business as well as working in his own business as well. But we cocooned him and said protect him. And we protected him early before there was any lockdown. He was protected two or three weeks out before lockdown came in. So then I said, right, so who's next? So next is families looked after. I knew the rest of the family were okay. Um, our daughter, who's in Price Warehouse Coopers, is an accountant. She was able to work home. They acted really, really early as well. And our other daughter, who's in the civil service, they acted a little bit slower, but she, she, she's, she's at home as well. So basically, and our daughter was out of school. So we were, were all at home, all four of us with Susan and I. So, and Susan, being our financial controller, she was able to work at home. So the next thing then was, how, look at my team. We have 30 people in the business. How do I protect them now that I've got the family protected? And this all happened within 24 hours. So it wasn't that I was, yeah, it was all happy and simultaneously, but that was the order in my mind, family first. Now our family um, uh, that works with us. So we said, right, so anyone who doesn't have to be in the office, we, we got working from home. And we, we had that pretty instantly. So luckily we built all of our systems in the cloud. So we could access all our marketing systems, all our financial systems, all the things. So that was pretty good. Um, and then I said, right, so what's next? We have our production people. So we're gonna go into lockdown. So let's see, um, let's work some extra hours and get all the current orders we have out the building. So no, none of our clients are waiting for anything. So we did that and we, we got that out. And then we've another part to our business that's actually regarded as um, What's the term they use? Key. We're part of the packaging pipeline. So, um, so what we do part of the process of packaging for pharmaceutical and for food and stuff like that. So that part of the business is busier than it ever was. And the photo's gone from here to zero. <laughs> um, so, so then I said, right, so that's now done. So I said, next then the other part of the triangle is um our clients because we regard them as family as well I said what can i do here now to help because it's always been part of our purpose to help as best we can so I said, let's set up the think tank and Clay, you think i'd, I'd choose a word that i could pronounce properly right because in ireland we don't say or hates actually you weren't tanking were you <laughs> I wasn't thanking, but wait till I tell you a funny story about the way the Irish don't pronounce the, our THs properly. So um, our sales manager in the UK, we were driving to a trade show a couple of years ago. And he says, Ronan, I have a challenge for you. I want you to go in to a garden centre and ask for three trees, because we say three trees. So I want you to go into the garden centre and ask for three trees and see what they give you. <laughs> three trees. <laughs> okay <laughs> so um yeah so aside from that so <laughs> so apart from spending my time with the family and and ed i started to follow ben, Sh ben shirk's idea of do a little bit more exercise so i started a five minute exercise so before after my breakfast i take five minutes i couldn't touch my toes i was about this far away from them when i started and now i've got my knuckles onto the ground so Ooh. 25 of them 
and then I do 25 twists, you know, twists in the body, and then I do 25 knee pumps of each knee. So I do that in the morning. At lunchtime, we go for a 40-minute walk. Um, I've started to eat better. Um, and then strategically, I've been found myself more creative than I normally am. So I set myself the target a month ago to design new business models that I replace our photographic business in three months in terms of turnover and profitability. So I'm working through that at the moment. So I can't give away any secrets just yet. But <laughs> it's on we, won't, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah, so, 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 and those things have to fit with, with our purpose. Our purpose is always to help people. Um, achieve and, and be happy and stuff like that so that's our core purpose because I love to help people succeed at what they want to do and you guys are exactly the same the three of you and um, so that's what I've been up to so nothing too exciting I'm working probably 16 hours a day and um, and have been all through it <laughs> so where a lot of my friends are sitting at home drinking beer with nothing to do and um, I've never been busier <laughs> our profitability is not there but I'm working now to create yeah. that when we come out of this, because we will come out of this. And mm -hmm. the other thing that I see everywhere, and you've already touched on this, but people are reassessing their lives and they're reassessing what's important and they're reassessing that humanity is good and the center is good. And I, we, I know there's people trying to keep it out here, but I think you might, in our politics and stuff, but I see people coming closer together regardless of politics. And I think that that's given people a perspective of what's really important. And you know what? The rat race isn't important. What's important is humanity and looking after people. And I think as a result of that, that what our industry does will be much more regarded by the general public, the importance of what we do. So I actually think that if we prepare now, that when we do come out, that there will be a bounce. It won't be immediate because of the economic challenges, and we know what happens to our industry in that. But I think if we if we work smart and we prepare for that and we put the right messaging out there and we properly story brand it and we look at our pricing and we we assess, you know, how how if I'm not if I haven't been properly paid for what I'm doing, now I need to readdress that and fix that now because I do believe that within a number of months of coming out of this, we will see a bounce again. And you won't see it immediately because it has been proven and all. I'm an economic nerd, so I read all economics and stuff. So I saw a newborn photographer saying, you know, with all the people with their free time now, in nine to 10 months, we're gonna be really, really busy. So I went studying that to see, is that likely to happen? So the economist had an article that said that um, when there's a crisis, there is a baby boom, but it's not nine or 10 months later, it's 12 to 18 months later. So, so I th and I think that would probably reflect a lot of our industry and in that initially when people come out, they'll be a bit scared. You know, they, they, a lot of people won't have money in their pocket, but a lot of people will have money in their pocket. So we got to come get smart with our marketing and identify. So who still has the money in our pocket? And let's, let's target that as our ideal client for when we come out. And then I think the people then, once the economy starts to recover again and we drive out of the recession, those other people who, who, who start with less money in their pocket will get money in their pocket and they'll have a greater appreciation for what we do. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I'm, just, I'm gonna jump in real quick. Uh, I saw something and kind of tweaked it and put this on my um, Instagram. Dear client, I'm in this for the long-term relationship, not the short-term hustle. And I think our client, you guys in the very first one hit on this, that our clients need to know that we are still here and, and that we're not going anywhere and give them that sense of um, knowing that we're, we're still here and that we'll be here and that we're not gonna come out with all this, um, uh, you know, like what Ronan, I, I'm stumbling over my words, but that um, we as professionals aren't gonna immediately stop, start dropping our prices just to scramble, coming up these, these, these cheesy things just to get money, 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 money right away. I don't, those aren't my kind of clients and that's not the kind of photographer I wanna be, nor am I. So I think it's very important for us, like learning from Carol and, and taking a page out of Kevin's book of, of interacting and staying prevalent and present in front of our clients. Um, in whatever way necessary, just so that they know we're, we're okay, because they care about us too. 
Yeah, I think too, um, it's important right now we're all, isn't it interesting that arts come back? It's popular again. So a lot of people when they say, well, I want to improve myself, they're not necessarily saying I want to, to learn more knowledge. You hear things like I want to learn to play an instrument or I want to learn to, to create something, but there's a lot of art going on in the houses and, and even the performances on the TikToks and everywhere else, like all these things are artistic. People are creating again and they're getting, you know, and there, there's this whole creative vibe around the world that, that something new is going to come out of this. And it's so encouraging to, to think about that. But as we're doing it, as we're developing ourselves in these things that, that we're finding passion uh, in, then we also need to consider that we're, we're diversifying a bit. And so when we come out of this, we're not really learning these things so that we can get through. Maybe we should not think so much about just getting through, but let's take it with us. And if, it, if these skills are something that either bring us passion or something that, that we can monetize, great, you know? And let's add that to it so that when we get out of this, maybe we don't go back to business exactly how we did, but maybe we never were meant to be. And maybe we're coming out with, with a bigger tool set if we just get into it. What do you think? Josh. <laughs> and I have a sewing machine now, so look out. <laughs> well, okay, you know, all the great um, designers like Ralph Lauren and all those people, you know, they, they started with a sewing machine and they put a brand around what they do. So I'm looking forward to seeing you know, K's masks, you know, <laughs> in all the top stores around the world, you know, that cost two and a half thousand dollars because it's yeah. a K's mask. Because it's, because it's a limited edition. Scarcity is good in marketing there terms. Go. There you go. <laughs> there you, go. you know, Kevin, is there a, um, I'm, and I'm just throwing this out there, I wonder if there's a, um, a way that, and, and Ronan, you too, that, that we, that any of the people that are a part of, of the Tank Tank, um, <laughs> I don't know why I have to make that face when I say it, the Tank Tank, um, that, that we could post up books that we've run across, that we've read, that have helped us, or tips and things that we've done. And maybe we, the, we can all not only do that ourselves, but reach out to all the other um, presenters of this group like, what are you doing for your mental health? And, and you did the very first one and it was so powerful. And I, I, I just, that's really something that I think we need more of is helping each other out like this, Kevin. I, you're, you're such a good soul and, and you've got such good uh, vibrations. I don't know why I do this. Vibrations about you as well. But that would be, that would be something that, um, you know, let, I'm, I'm, I'm asking anybody who's watching this to put it in the thread. If you've got a book or something that you're doing, um, I would love to learn. I, I'd love to, uh, Carol, I'm going to jump all over that. I'd love to learn. Hey. Oh, I have a whole sheet full of that I will share. Well, I think a, good spot, a great spot for that is in the photographer's uh, think tank, which is where um, yeah. we're, we're kind of trying to, Brennan's got this space where everybody's coming together. Uh, all photographers are invited to that. It's, it's open to, to anyone. And it's mm -hmm. a great spot to put things like that and just get everybody to contribute to it as well. And if, if, if anybody ever wants to go live, just like I'm here with a book, I'm going to go on for five minutes and talk about a book. Like it's open to people just to go live in there anytime they want. It's, it's, it's a community for everyone. So don't feel that you have to get my permission to do anything. It's open to you all. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's really yeah, great. So we have, yeah. So we, we have the think tank that is, uh, you know, the, the group, the original group we got together to put these on, but then there's another uh, a place where all the information goes and a community that was formed behind that is a collaboration with every photographer, you know, and that one is falls under the photographer think tank. Is Photography it? think tank is, is the group for all the photographers. And then the leadership one is for you guys yeah. who are, who, who are putting together all these programs. So, so you can go live in the photography think tank anytime you want, just go in there, press live and off you go. I went, I went through a, it's a three chair exercise on money the other day. And it was a real big eye opener because the biggest thing, you know, being a pro select mentor is, you know, these 
um, new new photographers that are out there that are crossing over from the CDs or the sticks and uh, they're, they're trying to learn in-person sales, IPS. <laughs> and the biggest thing that their biggest hurdle is they have no idea how to charge. <clears throat> and I can remember <laughs> the phrase of, you just need to get that stick up your back. But if you're coming from that mindset of you're not worthy, you have no, you have no idea because I'm clearly one of them not being, you know, looking at, you know, what is your idea of a salesperson? What is your idea of money? What, you know, what, what is that underlying fear or assumption that you have with money? And if it, you know, if I hadn't gone through that exercise of looking at money and then you, you pick yourself up, okay, after looking at it and, um, and then you go, then you set yourself inside money and you're looking at from the money point to the person across. So that would be me. And what does money have to say to me? And because a money is just value. It's, it's not energy. It isn't anything. It's just a value set that somebody will pay you for the services that they think that, you know, that you're worth. And so just take that whole thing. And, you know, for me, money was, so what <laughs> was money's the root of all evil or, you know, that, you know, those type of people are not, they're not good or whatever. They're snobby. All that, all, the, all that subconscious crap that can get into our minds preventing us from having money. So it was a big eye opener for me to get yeah. rid of and bust through those concepts. Carl, if I could build on that, so um, being a profit first professional coach, you know, I yeah. love profit. I think, you know, I love that I have to write a big tax bill because that means I made more profit. Um, yeah. So, and I have the money in my taxation account because that's what you have as a profit first person. If your taxation account, so when the tax is due, the money's there. And Mary Fitz Taylor and I've talked about this in the think tank on, on various things. But what I wanted to say was, you're right. A lot of photographers that you meet, they don't know how to price themselves. And it comes down to what you've talked about is not valuing themselves first. But in the other piece is they may not have the skills to figure that out. So we, so we have a calculator. If, if you go to 3xmsolution.com forward slash Ronan, you see a calculator there. And I've taken the, the profit first professional system and I've re-engineered it as we creatives tend to do. We take something and re-engineer it. And I say, right, how much do you want to earn from your business? How many shoots do you want to do a year? Um, and it asks you a number of questions and it calculates out exactly what you need to charge as an average sales price to achieve that end income while also running your business with your 30% of operational expenses, having 15% in your taxation account, paying yourself 50% in owner's pay and making 5% in your profit that you can put away into your account. And I find when, when I show that to photographers who don't know how to price, they go, really? I have to charge that as an average sales price to achieve that end in income? Yeah. But I, I like to start backwards. So there's a tool you, I'm happy for you to share with whoever you want. If they want, it's free. They go on to 3xmsolution.com forward slash Ronan. They'll see the Let's business start. calculator. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. It's, it's our website, 3xmsolution.com. You're channeling slash, your father. <laughs> forward slash my name, Ronan. <laughs> so, but I'll post it. I'll post it in the chat after the words anyway. For okay. People to find it. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's yeah. right. Um, usually when I'm working with a studio, we'll go backwards as well. We get to your dreams because uh, with an artist, uh, we're not logically driven. We're, we're driven by our emotions. So if I can, if we can simplify the entire process of how, um, of your path to get where you want to go, but first you got to understand, like you guys are saying, there's got to be the goals, where you're going to go. And then we can break it down to how many clients you need per month and after that, then you get to the portion of what you're talking about, that fear that, that is in your way. If you can get, replace that, flip the switch from anxiety to excitement, because that's the same chemical reaction. So most of the success of the students and the people I've worked with is just getting them pumped up about what they already want to do and then uh, showing them a simple path to get there. But 
almost anything, anything that we do in life, like um, as we're looking at going through this thing or, or even starting something new, is to figure out a way to, to get excited about it. Because prolonged excitement becomes passion, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and passion, passion is something that, uh, that we want to live life with in everything that we do. And that's, that's what really draws other passionate people. And, um, you know, the channels of everything that we want to do, so. You know, I, I think the one thing that I learned a long time ago that I've held with me all these years is um, because I have um, I'm two, two sides of a brain, a passionate and my artist's brain, and then I have my, my banker, my accountant, my business brain. And so a lot of times they fight inside here with all the other people that are up in here. Um, and... <laughs> And, and there's, a, there's a war going on. And I found what really helped me so much was I have at the studio, I have session days and then I have workflow days, i.e. business days. Even though we're not functioning right now, I found one of my frustrations is my head's getting all muddled. Obviously, I didn't realize we had been in this situation as long as we have. So I guess I am telling myself out loud and I'm reminding you guys to hold me honest or hold me to this, that when I sit down to make business decisions, I need to let my creative side go a little bit. And then when it's time to be creative, I need to let my business brain go a little bit so that um, I'm, not, I'm not getting ready to come back into the world and back into the workforce with a, an emotional brain that's telling me to price myself at a, at a point that my business brain really knows isn't correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. And, and you know, even in the, uh, when we're talking about sales like in person or whatever, you, you talk about logic and emotion and you don't want your clients a lot in the logic realm. You think of that more as like hot coals, get on there and get off as quick as you can and get back to the emotion. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the same thing in that thought process as well. Uh, you, it comes with decision, you know, making decisions and, and standing by those decisions. Then you can switch back over to the emotions and use that to, to fuel your passion to get there and be excited about like if you if you decide make that quick decision okay this is what it's worth and this is why then get off of those hot coals and then go over to your emotions and use that as your your power to to be excited about getting that much and then being grateful for that you know yep. it, that's a good balance between things so this uh, logic logic quick and emotion is is what uh it's the driving, it's the fuel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly have a lot of time to be trying to figure things out right now. We do. <laughs> we do. That's true. And I think that's a wonder, I think it's a wonderful gift, you know, like it keeps coming back around. There's a, okay. I, I was waiting for the guest appearance. <laughs> 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 I got stuck being quarantined with this guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. The people, the people in my isolation that I see, I, I hope they don't show up where you see them too. Yeah. That's <laughs> much, but I ask, like, how are you handling this? I'm like, well, I've, I've got all these forces keeping me company yeah. all the time anyway. This is, yeah. All of my I, personalities are just fine. <laughs> I just call this Wednesday. This is fairly normal, except I miss the hugs. And, We're yeah. on Wednesday? I, I don't know. There's no time anymore. Yeah, we are Wednesday, I think. I think so. But you think so? Well, what time is it where you are right now, Ronan? It's uh, close to 8 p.m. Where's your cocktail? I haven't had it yet because um, we're, I haven't had my dinner yet, but I'm invited to a group get-together tonight at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is 10 p.m. our time. So if I start having a drink now, I'll be by then. So I'm waiting. <laughs> so there we are. I wonder if there's any of the people attending, have there any questions? I haven't seen any questions yet. I don't know wh whether we haven't had a, an intelligent enough conversation that they need to ask a question or just <laughs> our guests are so intelligent that <laughs> I don't know. I'm talking it's loads of crap now. Um, it's the choice of our own realities, yeah? It's the which? It's the choice of our own realities, like the we can choice bring up our own little realities. But, but yeah, I think um, 
I'm not sure that it actually streamed. I think I saw a message a little earlier. So yeah, so it didn't, it didn't stream into Facebook, but it did, the people who signed up to go to the webinar, they've, um, they've, been, they've been with us. We've only lost okay. one person through the whole thing. So thank you guys for being with us. Guy, yes. you're very welcome. Thank you so much. Kevin, do you want to get a roundup from everybody? And we'll call it a night because I do feel my glass of vino calling me. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. Let's just let's just go around with, uh, and then everybody just give a little goodbye, whatever you like. Okay, you you can start. Um, well, I wish all of you well. Stay safe. Tell somebody you love them. Don't wait. Um, be kind. Find your inner child and do something creative that has nothing to do with photography, and uh, give yourself a hug from me. Carol. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming in. It's it's nice to have somebody to talk to besides my husband <laughs> and my dogs. <laughs> and um, email me, carol at ronnichols.com. I'm going to be doing that um, magnetic mind process uh, for 12 weeks, and I'll take anybody that wants to go through it. It'll be real fun. Eye opening. I'm just writing this into the chat so people have it. So it's carol at ronnichols.com for yep. the, the work, what is it called? A workshop? It's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's going to be my magnetic mind. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, right. I'm a one finger typist. I did my dissertation a, a number of years ago. That was this thick with one finger. So I'm a bit slow. Um, carol at Ron, magnetic mindset. I hope I've spelled that right. Okay. So that's there for you guys as well in the chat. Um, yes, yeah, so, so my last piece of advice is, um, you know, keep joining the Think Tank. We're here to help you. Um, what's on next for the rest of the week? So let me just summarize that for you. So for tomorrow, we have Audrey Willard interviewed by Mary Fist Taylor talking Ooh. all things marketing. On Friday, we have Bradley Bulmer, Jonathan Ryle, and I'm interviewing them on how to get deep diving into creating your online marketing funnel. And we have a big present for everybody to join the Business Success Academy new membership group where Bradley and Jonathan will help you implement that. And just to give you an idea, Bradley's a photographer in the UK. They have a family business. They do 40 sittings a week and they generate 30 of their sittings a week using online marketing funnels. So he's going to share all that knowledge with the world so you can do the same as him. And so, so, and then on Monday, we have the first panel from our wedding group. So looking forward to that with Dan mm -hmm. and his team. On next Tuesday, who do we have next Tuesday? It's gone out of my head, but it'll come back. But anyway, just to let you know, five days a week. Next week, the week after, we've stuff coming to you, join us. If, uh, you know, we, we love you, we want you to, to be with us, we want you to ask questions, we want you to participate, and um, so please do join us. So that's my piece of advice. Great, thank, thank you. Sir. Yeah, thank, I, thank I, you everyone for, for being part of this. Thanks everybody for, for tuning in. We appreciate you and your time. And I uh, look forward to, to meeting more people in the photography think tank. Um, last words I'll say is, uh, Keep your humor if, you're, if that's you. You can be serious and have fun at the same time. Um, play, because we're creatives. Come on, let's be serious. We don't work for a living. We play like a musician plays an instrument. We play, keep playing, keep growing, keep learning, and uh, take what you are learning and growing now with you next. It's not, we're developing, we're not waiting. We're developing and we're gonna take it all with us and we're gonna be better and stronger at the end of it. So, Peace, love, happy, harmony. See you. Good night, everybody. <laughs> love you all.